You are what you eat. So today we're going to be feasting on the neck of toys, Nightmare on Elm Street, part five, the dream child, Chef Freddy. Five years have passed since Freddy Krueger was sent howling back to hell, but now a new kid on Elm Street is being haunted every night by gruesome visions of the deadly dream stalker. And if his twisted soul takes possession of the boy's body, Freddy will return from the dead to wreak bloody murder and mayhem upon the entire town. Let's figure out how tall Freddy Krueger stands, and for that we're going to take the tape measure. The Ultra Measuretron 5000, and we're going to put it right to the top of his head, right about there. The tape measure tells us that the figure stands at 8.3 inches in height, or in centimeters you would be looking at 21.1 centimeters. Let's have a look at his accessories. First things first, Filet de Barbie. Um, recreated here is Greta's, of course, the leading up to her demise, and displayed in front of her, despite for the fact that she's not hungry, is this filleted Barbie in which Freddy will, of course, uh, feed her, and she gets quite substantially full, and, well, we know, unfortunately, Greta's poor fate. It's a nice recreation of the tray that was in the film, although there is a slice I believe in the film in which of course he's pulling it from there is no slice unfortunately here on the barbie doll but still nonetheless it's still pretty neat you've got some apples there and it uh, looks like some carrots and whatever else that they've put on the tray itself i do like also that the tray has a lid so if you wanted to display it say for example in freddie's hand you can technically do that the fingers, the thumb, as well as the four fingers are closed shut, so you sort of have to pry the fingers away from one another. And I find it's easy just to loop it on his thumb first, and then from there you can bring it up around his fingers. It doesn't quite fit the four fingers, but at the very least, you can angle it up. And uh, he, does, he does fairly successfully hold it up as if he's lifting up the tray. This unfortunately doesn't really have anything that can support it. It should have come with like the little wheel cart that you could have put the tray on top of or something that, uh, you know, because there's no real means for him to properly hold it. So we'll put that to the side. We'll take the tray off. Nice touch to include the tray. And of course the little Barbie doll. Freddy also comes included with a chef hat. And the chef, chef hat, for the most part, is pretty easy to get over to his head. I don't believe it's intended to fit over top of his ears, and it would be a little bit more of a struggle to get it over top of his ears, so it's just easiest to put it over top of his regular, just his straight-out straight, straight out head. And it does look quite nice. That is unfortunately where all the accessories stop, and part of me feels as if... Oh, and actually, one last thing, too. In theory just to, in case somebody was questioning it. In theory, you could, like on the packaging, it shows him actually holding the tray. I just wanna show you, it's not the easiest thing to do. It's more so just sort of a balancing act of balancing it on top of his claws, but uh, he doesn't really hold it. In theory, he does according to the packaging. I'll show you that in a second, but in case somebody was wondering, he doesn't really quite hold the tray in his hand properly. Now, speaking of his hand, this is one thing where I wish NECA had included a secondary hand. This is such a pivotal scene, Freddy specifically dressed like this, and yet I feel like they left one crucial element out of this figure release, and that is the, the changed out spoon claw that he ends up using to feed Greta with. These two fingers are put together and there's a spoon in the middle that of course has the in, inner, innards, if you will, of the Barbie. And unfortunately, they didn't include it. They only give you just his regular glove. I don't know why they wouldn't have given you a secondary glove that would have had, I think it's actually between these two blades here, has that spoon in the middle of there, and yet they've left it off. 
I don't really know why they would have left it off because again, it's relative to the scene. That's how he ends up giving food to Greta. It's not simply just putting it on his finger and shoving it in her mouth. No, he's actually got like this little spoon, but they've left it off. I don't really know why they would have done that. So that's really all you get for Freddy's accessories. Adequate amount of accessories. At the very least, he comes with things that would make sense crucial to that scene, but then missing the very obvious thing, and that being the gloved hand with the, the spoon attachment. I don't really know why they left that off. Let's bring in the packaging like I always seem to do for the retro cloth figures. There it is right there. Looks good. Right even there, there's the spoon. And yet they've left it completely off. It's interesting as well that there's baby Freddy there in the background. I like that. And there is the split open uh, Barbie in which he's feeding Greta from. But right there, there's the spoon. Yes, I unfortunately cut it deeper than I really wanted to when I cut open the clamshell to get uh, Freddy out. But there's the spoon right there. I don't know why they, why they left it off the way that they did. A nice looking depiction of Freddy. Sort of on the muted side. It's not super clear, but I do like the artwork still nonetheless. And that's going to go along with my other uh, retro cloth carded backs that I've been keeping all, all this while. Because I really do like these. Uh, and uh, I certainly am glad that NECA continues to do artwork for these and not just simply the movie poster. Flip it around, by the way. And there is Freddy holding the tray. Now you saw there's not really an easy way to recreate that. It's almost as if they didn't have the same Freddy glove underneath that. And maybe he had just a flat palm you rested the tray on top of. That one blade just doesn't allow you to hold the tray. It's kind of like this pinky blade that is causing the problems. If not for that, you may likely be able to rest it on top of his, of his glove. But it's this pinky, it's this blade right here that seems to be the big problem of that. Like, even the way that the picture is taken, it's sort of taken like this. Yeah, there's there's really no way for him to support it unless you put it against it and the blade is just sort of sitting there. And again, that just doesn't make sense. I dropped it on the floor. So let's have a look at Freddy Krueger as chef or waiter Freddy. I guess waiter Freddy would be the more accurate term for this. Um, he is wearing his uh, his waiter outfit, of course, in black pants and a very frilly top with cummerbund featured down below. I do like that they've added some Freddy elements to it. So like the cummerbund is a nice dark cranberry red. Even like the frill, the trim around the frill is colored in the green, the alternating green, the red, the green, the red, just like a striped shirt. And speaking of stripes, of course, he's got the stripes there in his tie. As for the head sculpt, I do like it. I mean, this is sort of one of those head sculpts that could really be mixed and matched with the other head sculpts that we've gotten from Retro Cloth Freddy's before. It doesn't necessarily scream, no pun intended, uh, the Waiter Freddy from Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5. It sort of is just a generic Freddy. I don't know how I would have done a different Freddy. Maybe I would have had him laughing, because, I mean, you know, again, he's feeding Greta, and uh, I just feel like he would be laughing more so as opposed to just having a very somber look to his face. To the credit of NECA, I think that the head sculpt is very good. He's got that hooked nose that is more prevalent in the Part 5 Freddy. More scaled back on the burns on his skin, like the sculpting of his eyes. Again, it's really a somber look on his face. There's not a whole lot happening on his face sculpt. But the rest of the figure sort of makes up for it. And then again, you can incorporate the chef's hat like that. And then you can display the figure like that. Wanting to get a little bit more expression, I think, happening in the face. Now, underneath this, if you are new to retro cloth figures, essentially, it's a regular standard body underneath. This doesn't seldom change unless you have, like, say, smaller characters and then they usually have a different body all on their own. What really then varies on these figures is the new head sculpt, the new hands, of course the glove on Freddy's hand. One of my favorite gloves, by the way, is the Part 5 glove. I like the burned etchings that they've got on there, the fingers. I think Part 4 and Part 5 are my favorite gloves. What's your favorite glove? Let me know down below. Detailing is nice and the paint is good on the glove. Just a missed opportunity, I think, in all honesty, that they didn't incorporate 
the spoon. And the spoon, maybe with some, you know, the Barbie innards inside the spoon probably would have gone a long way as well, instead of just giving us defaulted glove. I mean, this glove, I've talked, I know so much at nausea about this glove already, but this glove makes like tenth of a second of an appearance in the film in during this scene. He starts with waiter gloves and then he immediately brings out the glove and then as he lifts it up in camera then he's got the spoon in there as well. So like this glove makes such a very limited amount of, of screen time. Again that's the route that they went. But we again continue to look at the under the underbody there of Freddy. Nothing is different from really the other retro cloth figures. The boots, you could easily argue that the shoes are exactly the same as say a Jason figure or whatnot. Still wish that they would switch the pin option out for instead of ball joint. It does allow then the feet to have a little bit more posability for them. If I like lift the legs up, just like that, you can see that the feet always seem to be on angles. I've mentioned this over a couple of reviews already of the retro cloth figures, but they never seem to sit possibly as flat as they could. This could easily be eliminated by having these just simply ball jointed. If you ball jointed them, then you'd be able to have ankle pivots, you'd be able to rock it back and forth. As it currently goes right now, all you're really getting is just standard swiveled legs. That's it. There's a little hinge on the foot, and that's all you're really gonna get from it. Speaking of posability, Waiter Freddy, his head rotates all the way around and it hinges up and down. Um, he does not have much in the way of a crunch in the torso. However, you can rotate the waist. The arms do hinge out. This one arm's a little on the stiff side and you can rotate the arm around as much as you possibly can get it before, of course, the fabric starts bunching the shoulder area and it does limit and tighten the area in which then you can move his arms. Um, he does have a bend at the elbow, and you can rotate either of the hands, this hand or this hand, as you can see. And the legs split. You can move them forward. You can move them back. Um, there's no, there's a top swivel cut, but it actually swivels right where it connects to the top. It's not on its own hinge. Like there's no, no swivel right here. It has a single bend at the knee, and as we've already discussed, he's got a hinge in the foot. So good looking Freddy. Um, he, I don't feel as all, I don't feel 100% that he captured this, this scene as good as he could. There's a few little hiccups, I would say, that NECA has incorporated to this figure. It has me sort of scratching my head thinking, well, if the scene is this way, describing it in my head, if, it's the, if the scene looks like this and it's playing out in my head, I don't know why they would have chose this head sculpt and I, don't, I certainly don't know why they would have cho uh, changed or chose this glove and not changed it instead for the spoon hand. Spoon hand makes sense. That's the part that was in the movie. And yet, this is the glove hand that we got instead. Doesn't really make much sense. Now, I feel it would be safe to say that most people don't care for Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5, considering it to be the lesser lackluster sequel of the franchise. And I will admit, it may be not as good as Part 3, and certainly not as good as part four, but I still have a soft spot for part five. Maybe due to the fact that I'm a big fan of Alice. Most people usually gravitate towards Nancy. Personally, I'm an Alice guy myself, so she's my favorite character from the franchise, so I'll usually watch part four and then immediately follow it up with part five because the timelines are so close together. The unique concept of her being pregnant and the baby being the one that's having the dreams was neat, although I didn't feel like it fleshed itself out perfectly, certainly by the end of the film. It sort of didn't make much sense that it had to collect souls and then Freddy was going to come back. Didn't quite understand how that was all going to gel together. But speaking of this figure, uh, Waiter Freddy stands out to me as one of those notable looks for Freddy Krueger. In fact, often at times I think more of Waiter Freddy and the death of Greta Gibson before I think of Tuxedo Freddy, which happened to also be a retro cloth figure that we got from NECA Toys before. I like this figure quite a bit. I do feel, though, that we may never get this guy in an ultimate 7-inch version, but then again, NECA has surprised me in the past by delightfully releasing these ultimate figures so maybe we may eventually get ourselves a Waiter Freddy in plastic form, not retro cloth form. 
In the meantime, though, we can appreciate for the fact that because NECA is using the same mold for all these retro cloth figures, they're quicker to release these ones than they would release a brand new mold of Freddy Krueger. That being said, I like this figure and I like the accessories that he does come with, but I feel like the face could have been a little bit more exaggerated. And the one thing that's missing from this figure being perfect is the fact that they didn't include the spoon glove. I mean, it's such a pivotal thing in that scene. Gre Greta dies because Freddy is overfeeding her from the spoon in his glove. And yet they've left it off completely. I like that they include the Barbie, but I feel like they missed their mark by not including the spoon in, their glo in Freddy's glove. I guess this could be something I could fix and remedy by just taking a little bit of like a putty and sculpt out a spoon. But I feel like that's something that NECA should have included. If they wanted just to give him a glove, that's fine. But they should have also given him an alternate glove as well that would have had the spoon molded to the two blades. That's just my opinion. I still like this figure quite a bit. And I hope, down the road, fingers crossed, NECA will give us an ultimate version of this guy as well, with maybe the corrected spoon that this guy should have had right from day one. If you guys are interested in picking up Retro Cloth Waiter Freddy, he's currently available now in comic book stores. In fact, he just came out. So if you guys want to pick him up, price point on this guy will range from about $34 to about $39, $40 here in Canada. Might be a little bit cheaper in the U.S., might be a little bit more overseas. But if you guys have picked this one up for yourself, let me know down below what you think of the figure. Do you feel like he could have been a little bit better, that being in his face sculpt? Do you like the face sculpt on him? Do you feel like he should have had the glove hand with the spoon? These are all things that I love when you guys weigh in on down below in the comments section. I always look forward to reading new comments. And speaking of which, if you are new to this channel, let me know down below. Just say hello and I'll, we'll, we'll chat. We'll chat for a little bit. I always try to do my best to reply to all the comments that you guys leave down below. So if you guys are new or if you just would like to discuss anything, specifically maybe even like this figure, let me know down below in the comments section. And I always like reading new stuff from you guys. Speaking of new stuff... Speaking of a whole bunch of new things, new videos, of course, will always be coming to this channel. The best way to guarantee that you haven't missed out is by checking the video section on the home page. Just swing on over. As soon as you're finished basically watching this video, click the review spot logo or the name underneath there, and it'll take you right to my home page. And then just check out the video section, see if there's anything you may have missed along the way. We're gonna have a look at some more NECA goodies in upcoming videos, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.